In this video, I'll be talking to you about how I get my resin 3D prints nice and clean, and also some of my resin 3D printed safety advice that I definitely recommend you take. So first up, let's kick off with my resin 3D printing process. And this is something that a lot of you have asked for, especially since I upgraded to the larger wash and cure machine. Now I have a three step process. Most of the time it's just a two step process, but occasionally a third step does come into this. Now the first stage of this is the dirty dunk. And that is basically this old horrible resin infested IPA. And what I do is I take a basket that I used to use with my old wash and cure machine and basically I put all of my prints into here and I'd keep on like dunking and sloshing and dunking and sloshing and dunking and sloshing. And yeah, if that doesn't get stuck in your head, I don't know what will. And basically, it doesn't matter how dirty this gets, I can keep on doing it and it takes off a lot of that excess resin that's basically stuck to the prints when they come off the printer. Now one of the big downsides of this is it means I don't get to put the print bed into the wash and cure machine like obviously I can do on the large mercury wash and cure that I've got. If you have a smaller print bed that's not too much of an issue but on mine it doesn't fit. After the dirty dunk I move on to the clean dunk which basically they go into the main wash and cure machine that I've got which I put them into the big basket, dunk them in there and I tend to leave them in there for about seven minutes as it does its whirling and its cleaning process. Once that's done, I take them out and basically leave them to dry. Now the benefit of doing it in this like two-step process is you take off a load of that excess resin that is all over your models. It loosens it up, it takes it all off, and it means that most of that will sit and contaminate that first batch of dirty IPA that you're using. When you move on to that next stage, which is basically the big wash and cure machine that I've got, which takes up a lot of IPA, it means that I don't get as much dirty contaminated IPA afterwards and it means I very rarely have to replace the IPA in that. First dunk basically takes off the main batch of it and then that second dunk in the wash and cure machine takes off all that fine stuff that I can't quite get to. Now at this stage occasionally I will go back in so if I've got something that's a more complicated model for example which has more nooks and crannies that you can't quite get to or some of the models look as though they still have some excess resin on them I'll go back in with a toothbrush. Before this stage, I used this bamboo toothbrush, which has these really fine like bamboo bristles rather than the plasticky stuff. And because we haven't fully cured our models yet, I don't wanna use anything that's too harsh and abrasive on them because it could scratch the surface and just leave some imperfections there. But this is a really nice soft bristle toothbrush. So with my bamboo toothbrush, I take them and I dunk them into a third wash, which is basically super clean IPA and I just scrub them in those little areas that are sometimes hard to reach. It's very rare that I have to do this because that two-step process most of the time takes care of everything, but sometimes if you want to get extra clean, then this is a nice third step. Once that's done, I then take them off the support and I throw them in and give them a good curing and we're pretty much good to call it. Now, one way to recognize that you're not getting clean prints is either a loss of detail, but sometimes that's hard to look for if you're not too sure what you should actually be looking for. But the bigger telltale sign is when the models have this almost like shiny effect afterwards. So your models should come off with quite a matte finish, unless you're using some kind of weird resin that's really glossy. And I'll have some B-roll of this up on the screen for you to see. So it should be a really nice matte finish. If they come off and they still look sticky, or they've got these shiny bits all over them, it tends to mean that you have some resin that hasn't quite cured properly or been washed away properly, and you need to go back in there and give them a better cleaning process or just something along those lines. So that's my cleaning process. It's pretty simple. It does seem a little bit wasteful at first to have those three lots of resin, but by dunking them in that dirty dunk first, you take off the vast majority of the resin, which means when they move into the big wash tub that I've got that goes on my wash and cure machine, I'm contaminating that far less and it means I'm wasting a lot less IPA, which is always a bonus. Now, moving on to some of the safety tips, you'll notice I am wearing some of these. So some of the most important things you're going to need when handling anything to do with resin is gloves. First up, you don't want to be getting this on your skin. You'll also want a mask and ideally a decent mask. Before anyone calls me out in the comments, these are now some fresh gloves that I've literally just put on for this stage of the video. So you'll also want a nice mask as well. And this just helps to filter out any of those harmful fumes. And perhaps one of the most important things, at least in my book, is some glasses or some goggles. Now in previous videos, I've used some like reusable gloves, which are the big ones that basically cover up your whole arms. But I have switched to these and I buy them in like boxes of 100. And the reason I do that is convenience. Now, one thing that you wanna make sure that you do when you are dealing with anything is you wanna make it as convenient as possible. And that's because ultimately at heart, I get, well, I definitely am lazy and I know a lot of people are as well. 
those big gloves that I had were just a pain to use because they were then messy themselves and they were sticky and because they were so big and bulky you couldn't quite remove the supports and everything so what I started to do is I got really lazy and I'd go through my washing process with the big gloves on but when it came to removing the support I would do them barehanded before things had been cured I didn't use gloves and of course you know learn from me I then started to get this rash that basically affected the top of my hand there and it's sort of like the around my wrist as well might not have been anything to do with the resin, but since I then started going to these gloves and making sure that I gloved up every single time I handled an uncured print, I have no more rash issues as well. So learn from me. You want to make it as convenient as possible. You want to just be able to grab some of these, pop them on, do your cleaning, and then get some fresh gloves on for removing them from the support. It is wasteful. There is no getting away from that. It allows me to handle all of my prints. I consistently wear these because I've learned my lesson from it, and I prefer these over the reusable gloves. I'm also not convinced that the reusable gloves will last that long either. They were just getting so sticky and everything was starting to wear and I tried multiple pairs and nothing quite worked for me. So in my opinion, these are a must. Also on the subject of gloves as well, change them. So when you take them off the printer, once you're starting to get resin onto these, they're already starting to degrade and they're starting to become less useful in terms of protecting you. So I remove everything from the printer, I get it all cleaned and once that's done, I get rid of these. So when I move on to the next stage, which is removing them from the supports, I also have a fresh pair of gloves for that, which you can then kind of get away with reusing those because they don't get too much on there, but use some sense to judge when these are starting to degrade. Obviously, really important, you want to have something to protect your eyes as well. We all know that things happen when you're trying to scrape prints off the bill plate, for example, sometimes they can be quite stubborn and then you start chiseling away at it. And all it takes is for one bit to splash and get you in the eyes, or a support to snap and go pinging across the room or potentially hit you in the eyes as well. The last thing you want is uncured resin or just anything hitting you in the eyes, but especially uncured resin. If it gets you in the eyes, you're in for a world of pain, both physical and potentially loss of eyesight. It's not worth taking the risk. They are a pain to use because they do obscure your vision. There's no getting away from that. I'd rather have that irritation than the resin irritation in my eyes. So just, yeah, I would absolutely recommend these. And then of course, you've got your mask. And this might seem overkill, but at the end of the day, resin 3D printing is using harmful chemicals. We're using IPA to give off a lot of fumes. The resin itself is also giving off fumes. And although I have filters in this room and I have filters galore, trust me, I don't want to take the chance. At the end of the day, for handling these chemicals, we don't know fully what those long-term effects are. And I just want to say right off the bat here, I am not a scientist or a medical professional, so I'm not giving you advice from that perspective. But I just don't want to take those chances and I don't recommend you do either. So when you're handling anything that is uncured resin, just wear your mask. It's so much easier. It's not too much of a hassle and you can just get these filters replaced very easily. So I hope that video has helped. Let me know in the comments your safety bits, the things that you do, your cleaning process as well. And is there anything that maybe you've taken away from this, like me getting that awful rash, for example? that you're hopefully going to learn from. Because at the end of the day, if you are a resin 3D printing fan, the last thing you want to do is become allergic to the stuff or find that you just can no longer tolerate it because you didn't take some basic safety stuff with it. That's almost what I did and it would have been a massive regret. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.